this color, I had about eight ounces of it. So four ounces went on this bobbin, and then this is the other four ounces. And when you get millens, they're just, it's, it's just a big kind of mess. You know, normal roving is nice, it's all braided up and pretty and easy, and, but with this, you see it's kind of like just a big sheet. And these aren't, I mean, people call these millens, but they're actually called lap waist because millens have to do with fabric and um, lap waist is actually the correct term for fiber that came off the lap of the milling machine. So this is from the Brown Sheep Company and it's more whites and black. And you can see that, again, it's just this, it's this kind of big sheet of stuff that you have to sort through. And the thing with, with just like other millens, you have to kind of line up the colors. Like you, you could blend these two together, but you'd have to think about it. This would all probably go together easily. You got your browns, you got your greens, four ounces of the green. So that would be one skein of yarn. And I have about four ounces, a little over four ounces of the brown. So that would be another skein. This was one purchase of lap waste, and this was another purchase. So I just have one bin of it. And it's kind of fun. This stuff's great for blending and, you know, when I'm carding, if I want a little color or things what like that. What I do when I get a big mass of stuff like this is I start to sort it. So I'll try to pull out pieces. You just have to be a little adventurous with millens. You can see it's all kind of different lengths. It was cut at the bottom, um, but none of that matters. So I would probably do this one in half again. People do recard this stuff. I just like to spin it straight out of this. Um, so with this mass of stuff, you, know, you just start going for like the easy pickings. So you pull off that piece and they're all in about the same direction and kind of pile it up. And then once you have a pile of it, then you just take it and you can start start spinning it. If it's about that width, I think that's fine to spin with. This kind of stuff where it's really wide, I may or may not spin with that because it's harder to control it. Um, I'd probably do it in these shorter pieces like this. The, the only thing with lap waves is that you have to make a lot of joins. So once you feel comfortable spinning, these lap ends can be really great. Um, but if you're not as comfortable doing the joins, then the lap ends are going to be a little bit trickier. And I'm just trying to get it to stick on the... Whenever you start a new bobbin, you have to work on all the uptake and figure out what's going on. So you, you can see that this spins just fine. These, I mean, I, I, there are probably lap, it, lap waste in the world that um, are more mar like gnarled up and tangled. Sometimes when you buy lap waste, you don't know what you're going to actually get. So you might end up with a mix of superwash or a mix of different breeds or, you know, it's not only different colors. You might end up with locks or some merino and some uh, BFL or something else, whatever it is. So you just have to kind of be willing to work with whatever you have. I just lucked out. I bought my lap waste from a woman um, who it sounds like had bought a lot of lap waste. And so she was able to kind of sort it into these bags that she um, sold for about a pound each. And I thought that was a pretty good deal. You can get it much cheaper if you're willing to kind of work with it. If you have a bunch of different colors or different locks or things like that, you could card it together um, and kind of get bats out or dizzit off your drum carter and create um, actual like uh, roving in top. I don't know what this fiber is. One way to tell if you're trying to decide what kind of fiber it is is you can look at the staple length and to do that you just kind of pull it out. So it's a pretty short staple length. I would guess given the colors and given what I saw on their website that this is some kind of merino or superwash merino. Um, it's not a long fiber so it's not you know a Lester long wool or a BFL or any of that kind of stuff. And it spins up very soft and squishy, which leads me to believe it's more of like a merino or a merino cross, something like that. And so the, the thing with millens is that you do get little slubs in there sometimes. And if that happens, you just have to be a little bit, if you're picky, you have to just take your time and kind of come back to it and say, well, I don't really want that little funny thing in there. So you just pull it out. And so you're just doing a lot of joining. But if you're not afraid of doing a lot of joining, than millen or millens or lap waste, whatever you want to call it, um, can be really fun. You can get on the World of Wool, which is actually a, a site from the UK, 
you can get about a pound for uh, $17, I think, US. It's like 12 pounds, $17. Um, brown sheep uh, used to put out a lot of millands and they would sell them to particular companies and then they would um, redistribute them. I think they're not doing that as much anymore. Part, part of what's going on is that um, production equipment in mills has just gotten to be more efficient. So they just they would recycle their own waste normally now, I think, and or use it for something else. So